Hi, I'm Phil Steele, and I'm going to walk you through the workflow that I use in Lightroom after I've finished shooting an event. I'm going to go through importing the photos, rating them, culling them down to the selects, grouping them into collections for delivery for various participants at the event, and finally exporting them and delivering them. Now, if you have my full Lightroom Made Easy training course, you've seen all of these various steps and functions described in detail in that course. But sometimes it's still helpful to watch the whole process quickly through a real life example. So I'm gonna let you watch over my shoulder as I process the photos from a real event that I just photographed. All right, last weekend I shot a three-day event in Los Angeles, so I have over a thousand photos to process and deliver. Now this will probably take me a couple of days of work, so obviously for this video I'm going to speed it up, I'm going to show you just the highlights and not make you watch all the tedious grunt work. So the first thing we need to do obviously is to import some photos, so I'm going to go over here and click on the import button, and I've already attached my memory card and here are the photos on it. And I am going to copy these photos from the card to my computer. So I'm going to come over to the right hand column and do the usual things that I do. I like to use custom text, so I'm going to custom name them as I bring them in. In this case, I'm just going to name it Bill Conference 2015. And let's see, uh, keywords, let's put some keywords. The name of the conference is Bill. Uh, 2015 is the year. Whoops, that's 14, 15 events and conference. So that'll probably do. And now I need to put them into the right destination. And I've already created a folder on my computer where I'm going to put them. You can see I created a folder right here because I find it a little quirky if I let Lightroom create the folder. So I just do that by hand and then I go find that folder in Lightroom and just put them in there. So 2015 and there it is. So that's selected. Now I should be ready to go and I'm just going to let it import the photos. And here they come. So I obviously won't make you watch that. I see there's over a thousand on this memory card and I have a second memory card also. I'm just going to go through the exact same process with the second memory card after I get the ones off of this one. I'm going to dump them all into the same folder and then we'll go from there. Okay, now the photos have all imported and I can see that I have 1,511 photos here. So I definitely need to get that number reduced rather dramatically. But before I start going through them one by one and deleting them and rating them and fussing with them, I'm gonna do a little preliminary setup work that will help me be more efficient. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a few collections that I'm going to use to sort the photos into. And I'm gonna go down here to the collections panel and I'm gonna click on the little plus sign and first I'm going to create a collection set, sort of a parent level collection that all of the others will go inside. And so I'm going to call the parent one Bill Conference 2015. And I'm just going to create that. And uh, you can see that appeared right here at the top of the uh, collections panel. And now I'm just going to create a few more inside that one, create a collection and it's already checked off automatically. It knows that it wants to put it inside the collection set I just made. It's kind of clever that way. So I'm just going to uh, call this one sponsors, which I'm gonna have a little uh, collection of photos of goods that were provided by sponsors of this event because I've already been asked if I can provide photos of the sponsor's goods. That's pretty typical for an event. So I'm gonna make a collection where I'll group those photos. So I'm just gonna create that. And uh, you can see it created it right inside the uh, the Bill Conference parent uh, collection thing that I created. So I'm gonna make a few more for individuals. Sometimes when I'm in an event like this, I'll end up doing a few little portrait sessions or headshot sessions or impromptu for people if they're just standing in a place where there's some good light and they want some photos that they might use, then I'll create a few photos for them and I'll send them to them afterward. So I've got a few people who I know I did that for. Um, I'll make one for Alexis, make one for uh, Christy, and I wish it wouldn't scroll down every time. Make another one for Faya, which who I can never remember how to spell her name. I think that's right. And uh, let's 
make another one for Elizabeth and one more for Meg. I guess they, uh, they all tend to be women, don't they? But, you know, I guess I'm a single guy. What can I say? Okay, now I'm going to go back to the folder. I've got all these little places where I can sort the photos into later as I need to. And the next preliminary step that I want to do, this will make it more efficient for me to rate these with a star rating system, a numerical system. I'm going to assign a three star rating to all the photos in the set. So right now the first one is selected and uh, I'm going to select the last one. And I'm just going to click here, three stars. So I just assigned three stars to every photo in this set. And the reason I do that as a starting point is because I'm not going to keep any photos that are worth less than three stars. If they're worth less than that, they just get deleted. Now there's one special little uh, exception that I make, and if you, uh, if you took my Lightroom course, you know I have a little uh, a habit of, I'll use a one star rating on a photo. If I want to keep it as a useful example of a mistake, something that might be a lesson or a teaching uh, opportunity, I'll keep, I'll give one star to photos that are what I call useful errors or useful mistakes, but that's kind of rare. In general, I don't keep anything that's not worth at least three stars. And then as I go through, I'm going to make essentially three sets. There'll be three star photos, which is sort of like the big set of the ones I keep. Four star photos are ones that will go into a public set that I'm going to share. And five star photos will be my favorites. They'll be the little special set that I want to share and say, these are the ones that I think are the best photos from this event. So the only ones that will ever see the light of day in public will be the four star and five star photos. The three stars are just ones that I'll keep in case there's you know, some use for them at some point or in case they're part of those that I want to share with people that don't go out into the public sets, but it might be photos of people who I took a little special heads, headshot session with or something like that. So now I'm going to start going through them one by one and I will rate them with a certain star number. I will mark them with the X if I'm going to delete them and I will crop them, maybe adjust them if they need it. And I'll try to do as much of the work in one pass as I possibly can. Obviously it doesn't all get done in one pass, but the more, more of it that I can do in one pass, then the less work there will be on subsequent passes. So I'm going to open up the first photo and I'm going to start and that's not bad. And I have another one that's kind of the same thing and I have to choose which one do I want, this one or this one. I'm gonna keep the first one because I like the light better. And I'm gonna to go to the second one. I'm gonna mark it with an X for delete. And I'm gonna go back to the first one and I don't like this stop sign in it. So I might as well right now go over to the develop module and just like crop this thing. So uh, it'll be done. I won't have to deal with it again. So I'm gonna crop out that, don't wanna crop out the sign because that's part of the, part of the interest factor of this shot. And I'll just like crop their, uh, crop their legs off a little. And okay, that's good enough. I can live with that. So I'll move on. And uh, let's think, is this a three, four or five star? I think this will be a four star photo. It'll go into the big public set, not my favorites, but into the big set. And I don't need this one of her because I already have one. So I'll delete that one. And then I've got another two of this guy. I got one with flash, which is over flashed, one without flash, which is underlit. Let's see if I can do something to recover that one. And so let's bring up the shadows, maybe bring up the exposure. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I think I like and I think I like that one better than the one where he's lit with flash and it's just too much. So I'm gonna delete the one with flash. And this one, yeah, do I need to crop it or do anything to it? I don't want to crop the sign. Uh, it's kind of set up in the rule of thirds already. Maybe I'll just leave it alone and I will give it a four star also. And I'm just going to keep going through like that, choosing whether I think this one of these guys ordering food from the waitress, that can probably just be a delete. This one of this girl is not bad. I might do a little retouching on it for now. I will keep it and give it a four star. I might come back to it later. Oh, same girl. Let's see. Do the close-up or do the uh, sort of contextual one? Nah, she's out of focus in that one, so I'm going to delete that one. And I'm just going to follow this process through, and I'm not going to have you watch me do this because this is going to be hours of work. We got 1,500 photos. I think you get the idea, though, of how I'm going to go through, and maybe I'll show you a few you know, special cases or something as I come along, but for now I'm going to kind of go 
offline, behind the scenes, crawl through the set, working like this, and then I'll let you catch up with me when I get to the end. Okay, I've gone through the whole set now and I've culled it down from over 1,500 to a little more than 400. And I rated them all as I went through and I deleted a bunch, obviously. And now what I'm doing is I'm just going through and looking for things to put into the collections, like this little set of headshots that I did of Alexis here. I just dragged that into the little collection that I made called Alexis so that I can send those to her. So I'm making a pass right now and just creating my little collections. All right, now I made all the little collections of individual people and sponsors. So the next thing I actually need to do, I need to make a couple more collections because I want to have a collection that's the uh, four star photos that I'm going to put out in public on Facebook so that the organizers of this event can have them. And then I'm going to have a smaller collection of five star photos that I'll put on my own website as my favorites from the event. So I'm going to make another collection and I'm going to call the first one Bill 2015 favorites. That'll be my smaller set. I'm going to put it inside the bill collection yeah, in there and I'm going to create that and why does it always scroll this thing? Now I'm going to create one more. I'm going to call it bill 2015 large because that's going to be like the full set, all everything. Make, make sure it goes inside there. Okay, so now I have a place to put the filtered four and five star photos. So the next thing we're going to do is isolate them. So I'm going to make a filter. I'm going to filter by rated and I'm going to filter by greater than or equal to four stars, four stars and higher. And now I'm going to select everything in this uh, that's displayed in this set and click on the first one and click on the last one. I'm going to drag them all into the Bill 2015 large collection. So now there's 408 in there. Now uh, I have to change the size of my thumbnails to be able to click off and get it to un unselect. Okay, so now I'm going to change the uh, filter so it's five stars by clicking on that, five stars and higher. So now I'm gonna do the same thing again, click on the first one, click on the last one, drag them to Bill 2015 favorites in my collections. There's 159. So now I've got everything grouped into collections the way I want them. And now for these that I'm going to publish, I might actually go in and rearrange them a little bit. Like I might go into this collection and drag some things from here to there. If I want a different photo at the front or a different photo at the end or to ungroup some things that are similar to each other, I won't make you watch me do that. But you know, you can just drag them from place to place like, you know, moving them around like that. And when they're in collections, it remembers the order. So if you choose to export them, uh, in a file name order that will preserve that order, then anybody that you send them to will see them in that order. I talk about this much more in my event photography course. And so right now I'm going to go into these collections, see if I want to rearrange anything, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about exporting them. Okay, now it's time to start exporting some of these collections. And you can see in this one I made a small rearrangement. I dragged this logo thing to the front of the set because I kind of like to lead off with something that uh, sets the context like that. But otherwise, most of these photos I've just kind of left in their natural order. And so the first thing I'm going to export is this uh, set of favorites that I'll put on my own website. So I've, I've got to select them. So I'm going to select the first one, select the last one. Okay, so I'm going to export all 159 of those. I'm going to click the export button. Now I'm just going to make a temporary subfolder on my desktop because these are just temporary files. I won't keep them around forever. Um, Bill 2015 favorites. So I've just got them all isolated in their own little folder for this set. Okay. And I'm going to name them in a way that puts the file names in order so that uh, no matter where I upload them, if they get put into alphabetical order, I want them to come out in the right order that I've got them in. So I'm using a custom file naming template and I've got a whole video devoted to this elsewhere so I'm not going to repeat it all right here. But I like to make a custom template and you can see it'll put it in this kind of order where it'll have, say Bill 2015 LA and then it'll number them 001, 002, 003. So that way they'll all stay in the order that I've chosen to put them in. And I'm going to 
go down. I'm going to resize them to 1800 by 1200. That's just a sort of arbitrary uh, resizing on my part to what I think is reasonable for viewing on the screen. Nobody needs these things full size, you know, when they're uploaded to Facebook. They don't need to be, you know, 30 megapixel photos. So I usually resize them down to something that's kind of like a, a decent size to view on screen. And uh, a little bit of sharpening, copyright info. I am watermarking this set. Uh, just with a little watermark in the corner that says Phil Steel Photos, you know, copyright. Um, I won't watermark the ones that I'm sending to individuals, like the headshots that I did of them. Those are a gift to them, so I won't put any marks on them. They can do what they want with those. But these that I'm putting out in public, I'm going to put my little watermark in the corner. And I think that's pretty much it. So I'm going to pull the trigger on the export, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, the export is complete and here it is on my computer and you can see here are the files I just created and you can see they have that naming structure that I was talking about, 001, 002, 003, and they're in the order that I chose to put them in. And you can tell by this file name over here where it says temp. This is actually a temporary workspace where I put photos that I'm just going to delete later because these are all temporary exports that I'm going to use. Some of them I will upload to Facebook, some I will upload to my own website, some I will deliver to individuals by putting them on Dropbox and then sending them a link to the Dropbox folder. But eventually, I will just delete all this because this is all just junk that takes up space on my computer. These are not the originals anymore of these photos. These are an exported set reflecting the changes I made to them, edits, tweaks, the ordering I made. So this is purely a temporary workspace with these exported photos. And once they're all uploaded and given to the individuals, I would just delete them all to free up the space again. All right, so I've uploaded those photos to my gallery website on Squarespace. I put them here in the events category. So I open that up. There it is, Build 2015 LA. That's the new set. I'll click on that. And here's the first photo. And you can see it's got my little watermark down at the bottom that was applied automatically from Lightroom during the export. And here they are. So I'm going to go through the same process now with each of the other collections that I made, export them to a temporary folder, and then upload the photos either to Facebook if I'm sharing them with the uh, organizers of the event, or to Dropbox if I'm sending them to an individual, and I'll just go through them one by one and deliver them, and then I'll be done. Now, if you do event photography or are interested in event photography and you want to learn more, I have an entire course, 25 videos, more than six hours long on event photography called Secrets of Successful Event Photography. It's available on my website at steeltraining.com. And if you want to learn more about Lightroom and how I do the stuff in Lightroom that I just breathed through here, I also have an entire course on Lightroom called Lightroom Made Easy, also available on my website at steeltraining.com. If you're interested, I hope you'll check them out. And I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. <music>